places, Lord, in our church, in our families, overflow. That may shine brighter and brighter and brighter, just like you, Lord Jesus.
God. Almighty Jesus. a holy, such a great, such an amazing Father. Let's just give him another shout of praise this morning. Nobody is greater, nobody is bigger, nobody is better, nobody is more powerful than our God. Give out a shout of praise this morning. Thank you, Jesus. He is here. Praise Him this morning. Thank you, Jesus. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship.
this morning. Worship Him this morning. Yes. Amen. Amen. I just want to read Psalm 16, 11 to you. You make known to me the path of life. You fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. His presence is here this morning. May He fill us with joy. May He fill us with joy. this morning because it's baby dedication but if we get a bit restless in service there is a parents and tot room on my right your left um, but we're going to start celebrating if you celebrated a birthday in this week would you mind standing for me please we'd like to pray for you Auntie Mavis Mark come on come on Happy birthday to you. Please remain standing. We'd like to just play with you with the anniversaries. If you celebrated an anniversary this week, could you also stand? Oh, Harold. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Well done. Um, let's just pray for them. Father God, we just thank you for their lives. Lord God, those celebrating birthdays, thank you for another year added to their lives. I pray for favor to rest upon them and may you establish the work of their hands. I pray for the couples, Lord God, celebrating another year that you have joined them, Lord God, and may no one separate them. May they go in blessing upon blessing upon blessing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I don't have any prayer requests, but I do have a praise report. So we're going to continue with joy in the service. We thank the Lord for healing um, Ethan's ankle. And we just praise God for that. Father, thank you for Ethan's healing. I pray for anyone else who's trusting you for healing, who's trusting you for finances, who's trusting you for anything, Lord God, any aspect of our lives, we just commit it to you. And I pray that it will, that you, we will see the promises of the Lord in the land of the living. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And then our tithe message. Um, we had a leaders meeting on wed on Monday, sorry, and Pastor Lazal encouraged us with a word, and in that word she brought out three points. It was the priority, the price, and the purpose, and this stuck with me throughout the week because you can apply these three points in every aspect of your life, in everything and anything. And Matthew 6.33 says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. That's the NIV version. If you read Matthew 6, you will see that Jesus teaches us about money and, and that we do not need to worry about material things like food or clothing. But instead, we need to prioritize God's kingdom. Our tithing is a practical way we can prioritize God with our finances. We set aside an amount, whether it is big or small, and in turn, this price that we pay or amount is used towards the purposes of his kingdom. So let's pray and ask God to teach us to prioritize his kingdom this morning. 
Father God, we just thank you for the opportunity to give to your kingdom. I pray that you will teach us to prioritize you in every aspect of our lives, but in this um, way of giving, may we prioritize you in our finances as well, and may it be purpose to your kingdom in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Ashes, you may take up the offering. Remember, there are different ways to give. You can EFT. If you do EFT, it's E in retreat and your name and surname as a reference. We have the Harvest Fund, which goes into four um, places. You may choose which um, area you'd like to give. Otherwise, it is to our pastors and leaders' discretion. Okay. Um, can you just give a hand to Natasha Cubido? She is going to give a testimony, a Victory Weekend testimony. Come on, Natasha. You've got this. God's got you. Good morning, everyone. I am very, very nervous. Um, uh, just a short letter that I wrote that asked me to describe Victory Weekend, and this is what I felt. So my name is Natasha Kibido. I got saved almost two years ago. But before I got saved, I decided to do Victory Weekend because of how my congregation was so excited, how their faces lit up when I mentioned, when they mentioned the word Victory Weekend. And these important words, you won't know until you experience it for yourself. That for me alone made me very curious. Victory Weekend was amazing. Words cannot kind of describe what I went through that weekend. I was new at the church and didn't know much people, but always felt love entering the church. To hear the testimonies of these loving people gave me a deeper insight just how important it really is to be connected in a church that this journey you cannot do alone, that there is no shame in what you went through, no judgment, only lessons in life, that with God all things are possible. To how important it is to be educated in the Word, the deeper insight not only encourages us, but always protects us. Life didn't come with a manual, but the Bible is our guidance. What I took away from Victor Weekend, it made me want to, to learn more, more of the word. Learning more made me more confident, the confidence that the Lord will never forsake me. The purpose to do more, to spread my testimony, to help others, spread his word so anyone feeling lost and alone knows what love is, because God is love. I would really encourage others to sign up as it really changed my life. Before Victory Weekend, I was lost and alone. But with knowledge, it's power. Today, I know my purpose. Amen. Well done, well done. Give it up for Pastor Lizelle. Yes. <laughs> she says no. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Astrid. Look what the Lord has done. Natasha, we are so proud of you. Natasha drives trains, right? Am I right? So is, is that the right person? Yes, so you will find her on the station and now she's just um, shining for Jesus. So can we give God a huge hand of praise. Morning, everybody. It's a very, very special family service, so we might just go a little bit over this morning. Um, if your, your little one gets a bit niggly, as we said, there is room. It's also the Two Oceans Marathon, and quite a few of our people are there. Pastor Wayne and Karen's there. I'm sure Sandra's there. So, yeah, um, are they almost done? I don't know. Who would run so far? But praise God. I know Auntie Mavis is there just cheering Amelia on. And she also celebrated her 78th in the week. Not Amelia, Auntie Mavis did. So guys, just a few announcements. Discover Every Nation. If you've been visiting us for a long time or even a little while and you want to know a little bit more about who we are as Every Nation, it's a membership class. You can register at the iDesk, no obligation, but come and see. You know, you need to know before you commit. And so on Thursday, the 18th of April at 7 p.m., come and meet us as pastors and leaders for a cup of coffee. And we also want to get to know who you are 
as, as, as a family and as people. And then secondly, just to let you know that the Colors Family Picnic, we've postponed it to spring. It's on hold. We're parking it. The weather's been a tad colder. The idea was to do it on the lawn or perhaps inside and to get together to connect and know one another. But we are going to do it later in the year. Can we praise God for wisdom? Amen. All right, so for those of you who are tad disappointed, how fast we're going to connect because <laughs> we like to kumbaya. Then the DNA have a youth camp fundraiser, Every Nation Food Fair. We're going to put our attention and our focus onto that. Rams and Kath, look, Rams, can you stand? Okay, Kath, stand with him, sing your merry team. But Ramsey is leading our youth with his team. Please come and chat to him or one of the leaders. It's on Saturday, the 27th of April from 4 to 8 p.m. Him. It is a public holiday. Is it Freedom Day? And so, guys, please, and what it is going towards is the first youth camp since COVID. Our uh, young people, and we need to get behind them. And so, um, they're going to have a Every Nation food market, and it's food around the world. So, join them for good food, good games, live music, and karaoke, people. Come, all welcome. Invite a friend, a neighbor, young and old. That is happening. And I will see you there. Amen. And then we have campus ministry. For those of you who know who we are as every nation, we have one foot on the campus and one in the community. Who are our university students? Who is at campus? Who's at tertiary? Just wave at me. Nice and high. Like nice and high. Guys, that is the most exciting time to get plugged in and to deepen your walk with Jesus Christ. So calling all of you, whether you are at CPUT Bible Cape Town or UWC or any other campus, we have small groups happening on campus. Do you know we've got a thriving, thriving campus ministry throughout the nations and Cape Town. And so please, what you need to do is just give your name um, to the info table there, um, write it down, let us know which campus you are at. And so what it is, is an opportunity for you to grow in Christ with other students um, and just, you know, share the love of Jesus. And also if you have questions about your own faith, so please register. G Squared, your event is coming up on the 3rd of May at 7 p.m. There are raffle tickets and refreshments on sale. The tickets are 150 per person, and you can book it quick. I keep saying quick ticket, but it's quick hit. Or chat to Gio. Where is Gio? Gio, Gio. Okay, but Gio is here. Ask anybody who Gio is. There we are, Gio, Gio, Equorio. Come. That's Gio, people. <laughs> so all proceeds go towards getting the G Square dancers to the world champs in Blackpool, England. And we are behind them all the way. Amen. All right, and then lastly, as Natasha shared, Victory Weekend, there is a Preparing for Victory class on Sunday, the 28th of April, um, and then Experiencing Victory is actually happening on the 3rd and the 4th of May. It will change your life. I think even as us, us as facilitators, every time we do Victory Weekend, God is dealing with another layer in our own lives. So even if you've done it before and you need victory in your life, there is a cost for the booklets it's 150. Register at the IDS. Go online at www.enconnect.co.za slash events. Amen. Guys, that was six announcements. <laughs> um. So as I shared, this is an extremely exciting Sunday. It is baby dedication. And we just look at the beautiful families that have come to support. And we are going to invite Theo and Lehande Valentine. Uh, they are pastors in training, our lay pastors. And they are going to uh, facilitate that section. Can we give it up for Lehande and Theo? <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Hi. Guys, I'm so happy that you are here today. Some people run around the oceans, but you ran to church this morning. Um, it's awesome to have you in church. Welcome to all the families. Such a beautiful Sunday. Um, just before um, I came up uh, in the worship, 
God showed me a picture of a baby being swaddled. Do you know, mothers, it's not just you take a blanket and you throw it over. There's a way that you must fold the blanket, a way that you must lay the baby down, the way that you must roll it in. But I got such a sense of God that He continues to swaddle your baby. Whether you are 80 years old, whether you are 50 years old, whether what age you may be. And, and for me, that was so beautiful because I realized for all of you that's baby, doing your baby dedication today, you realize that you are leaving your baby in the hands of God. Two mothers dedicated their babies to the Lord. Two mothers both named their babies Sam. Their lives were so different, so different. But one thing came from that is that God never lets go of His covenant. God never lets go of His promise over your child. And today, as we as parents and church come together, we realize three things. We want to thank God for what He's going to do and what He is doing. We want to form a covenant as parents and as a church to rear these children in the sight of the Lord. And thirdly, we want to remember that Jesus himself was an example when he said, Suffer not the children to come unto me, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So today, I'm going to call on my beautiful wife to share some scriptures that, that just emphasizes and amplifies what we are about today. Leande. The first scripture is from Mark 10, 13 to 16. And they were bringing children to him that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. The next one is from Mark 9, 36 to 37. He took a little child whom he placed among them. Taking the child in his arms, he said to them, whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name, welcomes me and whoever welcomes me does not welcome me but the one who sent me we are now asking parents and families to stand as Leander reads out their names for you to come up you come up with your child you come up with your own mother your father you come up with everybody who is your posse this day and you come to church and you come up to the stage because we all are making a covenant. So can we all stand as parents and as family? And as Leande reads the name, please come up. Our first Baba is Zoe Martin. Zoe means life. And the parents are Fasih Martin and Emerine Simon. Yes, you help them. You help them as they come up. The next one is Araya Madison Daniels, and Araya means brave. And the parents are Simeon Michael Daniels and Taryn Daniels. <laughs> Our next Baba is Eli Jermaine Clarson, and his name means my God, delivered, constant growth. And his parents are Chad Peter and Malisha Kelly Clarson. And then we have Aston Lucas. And Aston means supplicant, noble stone. And his parents are Mikhail and Carla Lucas. And then we have Caleb Lee Leo. And that means free and gracious. And his parents are Kirtley Ambrose and Jamie Lee Leo.
Yeah, please stand a bit forward. You can stand forward. Don't be scared. Just come forward. Awesome. You can even come more forward. There we go. Church, there's, there's a few nervous people. Can you just give them a hand and help them around? Yeah. This is a charge for you as parents and as family and friends. In presenting this child to the Lord, do you promise in dependence on divine grace and in partnership with the church to teach him or her the truths and duties of the Christian faith and by prayer, precept and example to bring him or her up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. If you want to do this, please say, we do. Did you hear that? No, okay. let's try it again. If you really want to do this, please shout, we do. Awesome. Congregation, can you stand? Do you as members of this congregation acknowledge and accept the responsibility together with the parents of teaching and training this child that being brought up in the discipline and in the action or instruction of the Lord, he or she may be led in due time to trust in Christ and Savior and confessing him as Lord in baptism be made a member of this church? If so, please say, we do. Thank you, church. Can I call on the pastors to please join me and also the RLT, the leaders, as we pray. Pastor Lazelle will pray for us. The rest of the leaders can please lay hands. Wonderful. Can you, can you stand and stretch your hands towards them? Father, we thank you, Lord, for these little ones, O oh God. We thank you that your word declares that children are a gift from the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Father, we speak your blessing over each and every one of their young lives, over their parents, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as they would rear them in the fear and the instruction of the Lord. Father, we pray that your hand would be upon them always, Father. Father, we bless you for their lives, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, your hand of protection over them all the days of their lives, O oh God. Father, we declare and decree over them lives, that all your children will be taught of the Lord, and great would be the peace of your children. Father, we speak a blessing over them, over their generations, O oh God. I pray, Lord, that they would be young ones of influence, O oh God, arrows in the hands of the Master, Lord. Thank you, God, that you guide the parents, O oh God, that, Father God, they would know you to be a God of faithfulness, O oh God, that you would pour out wisdom and understanding at all times. I pray, oh God, that you would keep them in perfect peace with matters concerning their children, oh God. And Father, thank you, Lord, for the gift of family. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of friends. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of spiritual family. Father, it takes a village to raise a child, oh God. But Father, we bring this all under your covering. And Father, I speak the blessings of number six over their lives, that the Lord will bless you, the Lord will keep you, the Lord will make his face to shine upon you always, that the Lord will lift up his countenance towards you and grant you his peace in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Can you lift your children nice and high as trophies, as Pastor Wayne always says, the Lion King, and can we just give God a huge hand of praise for them? Amen. You may be seated. Don't leave the stage yet. Leander is about to just sing a blessing over them. Amen.
to give you strength even when you're forlorn. May you answer the door when Jesus comes knocking. May wisdom guide you when your mouth is talking. May discretion protect you and keep you pure. May you never stumble or fall for a loan. May your heart remain humble to the very end. May uprightness and truth be what you defend. May the world not ensnare or change who you are. May the light that's within you shine like the stars. May angels surround you, body, spirit, mind. May favor and peace be yours to find. May rejection and pain never reach you. May your spirit grow bold for what you're called to. And as you rest in God's care, I will rest too, knowing that Jesus is watching over you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. We have some certificates for you, and there's a special scripture that has been prayed over for your child as well. Can you give them a hand as they leave the stage? Amen. Congratulations. Jesus. Beautiful moments. There'll be some moments for photography later. and God is just adding to our spiritual family one way or the other. Um, so we are still doing the joyful series, which is a study on the book of Philippians. And this morning we are so blessed to have Ricky with us. And Ricky is going to share and minister the word of God. Hope that you're not in a full hurry. We might just go a tad over. But can we give Ricky a huge hand of... He needs no welcome, but he, let's welcome him. <laughs> Thank you, Ricky. Good morning. Nothing yet. Are we there? Are we? You can hear me. Praise the Lord. So good to be here this morning. It's always an honor and a privilege. To be the mouthpiece of the Lord this morning. It's uh, going through this week, and I want to encourage you. Do you know in sub Saharan Africa, we have 840 million young people? And there's a camp coming up. And I just want to double click there. Support our young people. Africa's median age is 19. They say by 2048, every fourth person within the whole world will be African. This generation is not unreachable. This generation wants us around but they don't want us to dominate every conversation. They want to participate. They want to speak their hearts. And I wanna challenge us as parents to create a space for them, create an opportunity for them to participate in the conversation of God, their faith, their purpose, because that space there is valuable and it's an opportunity to see a life transformed as we create that safe space for them. Amen? I'm just putting this in there because I think it's so key for us. So when it gets to supporting them to get to the camp, can I ask that we will just give the support as much as you can because I promise you if you want a better tomorrow, you can impact the young people today. 
They're not a perfect generation, but neither were we. Yeah. Yeah. The previous generation also said, I am worried. But here we are. We've made it. Till now. Let me pray for us. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are here. I thank you that none of us is here by chance. Thank you for your word that is powerful, that will accomplish what you set it out to do. Father, I pray that in this moment that you would silence every other voice that is seeking to compete with the voice of the Holy Spirit. I pray that you'd move into hearts and minds of people. Call them deeper into your presence. Pray that I'll decrease and you'd increase. It's all about you today and always. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, this morning I want to also just uh, quickly remind you that on the 20th of April, there's an outreach happening in the community of Kavda. And I want to encourage you to get involved in that space. You can speak to Barry um, after the service, and he can give you all the information that is needed for that moment. Right? Uh, I always think of if you want to get the gospel to people, meet them where they're at. Chances is they might not come into the door. But if I look at Jesus' model, he found people where they were at. Come on. I know some of us have been saved so long that you forget where you were at when Jesus found you and you're like, hmm, yeah. But it's okay. So I want to encourage you guys to, to please uh, speak to Barry. So this morning we are talking about being joyful. We are talking about the book of Philippians, and we, we're talking about Paul writing this letter to the Philippians, and this is the very place, Philippians was that place um, in Acts 16, when he was on his way to Macedonia, he wanted to go to Asia, but then the Lord said, no, just some while I'm there. You know, he was going, and in the going, God was speaking, and in the speaking, God redirected him, but he kept going. As a disciple of Jesus Christ, we keep going. We don't pray, Lord, should I go? We ask, Lord, where should I go? And if he doesn't tell you clearly, go here, there, there, you keep going in your home and in your community, in your workspaces, because, because God placed you there with a purpose. Amen? Just saying. But he kept going. Then he gets there to Philippi. Right, and as he gets to Philippi, and you can go and read that account in Acts 16, and I think this is where they locked him up. Right, though, and then all of a sudden the doors open of the prison, and, and, and God just does some great stuff. The Roman soldiers, they get saved. All of these beautiful things that God had a bigger purpose than he going to Asia, but the Lord saw some people that was in prison that need to be encountering the gospel that needs to encounter Jesus for themselves. Be okay if God redirects you, even if it's not comfortable. But in the midst of this, Paul writes this letter in to the Philippians, but you know the, the thing, whenever we read some of the other epistles that Paul was writing, he was always addressing some deep, deep issues within these guys. And if we read some of the accounts in, in, in Philippians, there wasn't so much issues that he was addressing, like in the book of Corinthians, like to the other guys that, that in the other places that on his mission field he was addressing issues, sending out Timothy, let's create structure, let's clear this doctrine up, let's clear this mess. But this is not the case within Phil Philippi. And so, just with that background in mind, also know that Philippi was, not a, pla was a place where um, some of the Roman soldiers and some of the old politicians of Rome, they would come and retire. Right, though? They would come and retire. 
So when people are in retirement and they're coming to rest, and, but there was also some other things that was happening in this place. There were some mines around where gold coins and things like that were made. And, but so you can think about some of the also social ills and things that was committed and happening in that space. When you have a lot of people that is retired in one space and has nothing to do, they'll find something to do. But let me not go too deep into that. Let's get into the Word of God this morning. We're going to read from the book of Philippians. We're going to go to chapter 3, and I'm going to read from verses 1. Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you is no trouble to me, but is safe for you. Look out for the dogs. Look out for the evildoers. Look out for those who mutilate the flesh. For we are the circumcision who worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. Though I myself have reasons for confidence in the flesh also, if anyone else thinks he has a reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law of Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. But whatever I gain, I had, I counted as lost for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God. God that depends on faith, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and may she in his suffering becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it on my own, but one thing, forgetting what's behind me and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal, the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Thank you for your word, Lord. This morning, they're running the two oceans. And when we read the last two verses of this particular scripture, we see here that Paul would talk a little bit about almost like somebody that's in a race, paints this picture of somebody that is running a race. He's running a race. He has not obtained the prize, but I'm pressing on. I'm pressing on and I'm pressing through. I want to get to the other side. And something that I read in this thing, as we get to verses 13, and I see what he says, one thing I do. And when somebody of the stature of Paul that writes two-thirds of the New Testament, and I would then want to be in that space, one thing, this one thing, I want to listen. What is this one thing? Because at this point, I think Paul was almost born again for almost 30 years, journeying with God, plus minus. So if somebody that has been walking with Christ, a persecutor of the church, coming to salvation, and for 30 years he's been journeying, three decades, I want to be in a place. Bro, tell me this one thing. I want to learn. I want to learn. So... You know, for the Jews, when they're growing up, these guys are taught it's high obedience. High obedience to the Mosaic law. Whatever Moses has given, this we live out. 
And we see here, Paul goes and he lists some of his credentials. Remember, this guy was raised, he was a Jew, he was coming from the tribe of Benjamin. And here Paul gives us his CV. It's almost like he's applying for a job with what he's listing. But he sees the following And I just want to show you that he says this, that I was circumcised on the eighth day. I am of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law of Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, I am blameless. He lists all of these credentials and it really looks so great, but Paul says to the Philippians, I consider all these things worthless and insignificant in view of the prize, in view of the great joy that is there. And we're going to talk about that joy today. So what is this one thing? And like a good preacher, he breaks it up in three. You know, the preacher always says, I've got three points. Only three points. Point one, and then it's point one, point one, point one, point two, point one, point three. And then he goes to point two, and then eventually you realize he has given me nine points. This was Paul's goal. He was set to achieving one thing, to know Christ and to become like him. Christ ultimately is the prize. He's the prize. He's that prize when, oh man, what a, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing it shall be. You see, the first thing Paul says here, the following, he says, forget what lies behind you. He says, brothers, I do not consider that I've made this on my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind me. I forget what lies behind me. And, and sometimes as we go through life, it is something that we all go through. We've got a journey. We are in this race of life, whether you like it or not. You are in this race. And as you go, I want to encourage you with one thing. Paul talks about who he was and his credentials, but he forget, says, forget that. But here is something that I want to say to you. There is nothing that you can do about your past. You know, sometimes it's good things and sometimes it's bad things. But ultimately, you cannot change the past. You know this moment here that these little beautiful kids were dedicated to God by their parents. Right now, we cannot relive that moment at all. It is behind us. Yes, there's a futuristic outworking of this moment where you dedicate your child unto God and saying, I'm going to raise this child in the ways of the Lord. But the moment is in the past. I think of that moment where Lion King, I watched this thing with my kids a lot. I watched it and I sometimes enjoyed more than them. You know, Rafiki, the monkey, <laughs> he get this woof and smell that Simba is still alive. And he goes and he follows the smell and ultimately he gets to Simba. And Simba, you know, is reminded about his dad that has died and he ran and all of a sudden while they're standing in this place, Rafiki takes this, you know, his kiri and pa, he hits a Simba against the head. <laughs> and then he hits the second time and Simba ducks and he asks him, why did you hit me? He said, it doesn't matter. It's in the past. <laughs> Sometimes in your journey of life, hard as it may be, we have to learn to forget the past. When I say this to you, I am not saying to you with a heart that is right here, hey, cry a river, build a bridge and get over it. That's not the heart here. I'm not saying don't deal with the stuff. I'm saying to you at some point in your journey, for the sake of advancing, you have to let go. 
As a believer right here today, you don't have the option of not forgiving. You don't. You don't have the luxury of saying, I keep this against you. Because at night time, sometimes you will pray and you say, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Now that part of that prayer alone should bring you to a point, whoa, whoa, who have I not forgiven? You're asking God to forgive you, but you're not willing to forgive another. And that's why things in the houses, they're like victory weekend. Victory Weekend helps us to release some of those stuff. People praying for us, the Holy Spirit moving through that moments in our hearts and our lives. And sometimes illuminate certain things that has been holding you back. You thought you were running well, but something kept you back. And sometimes the gentle Holy Spirit comes and shines a light in that space. And he says, it's time to deal with this. It was in my 30s that I had some issues. You see, I, I, I grew up without my father. Um, today I will say to him, great man, I love my dad. But it wasn't easy to utter those words. I remember when I came to church and people sing about the Holy Spirit. Oh, I was there. Come Holy Spirit. When it was that kind of vibes, I was there. When they sing about Jesus, I was there. When they sing about Father, I was here. Knuckles clenched because I can't relate. These people are so in love with the Father. And I'm standing here when I think of Father, I don't have a good picture. Because my biological father, I felt the rejection. Might not have been in his heart, but that is what I felt. My stepfather was abusive towards my mom and towards me and in the family. So I felt that both sides at time from time reminding me I'm not your son. But you all I knew as a dad. And now you're telling me I'm not your son, which means the second one also now pushes me one side. So when I heard father, my knuckles clenched and I was hurting inside and I refused to raise my hands. So when, when they sing these words of Father, I cannot relate because my picture was one of brokenness, hatred, to use the least possible way to express how I felt. But you know, I went for something in a moment of counseling. You know, when I was like 36, my dad phones me. And we, we have a, you know, unhalapta relationship, trying to come towards each other. This man phones me, and he tells me, I love you. I said, oh, okay. Oh, done. And I'm like, why are you doing this now? And I'm like, look at my wife, and I'm like, he said he loves me. I needed this <laughs> when I was maybe five, six, two, three. He said he loves me, and I could not understand it. But then I went for a sozo one day. Oh, my head. Stephen, I'm sitting there, the council and the one taking notes, and the tissue box, the bin is getting fuller as I was there, and the Lord showed me a picture of something that I have created that when it get to thing, got to things of my dad, I actually created a concentration camp when the counselor asked me, why, why did you ever go there? I said, I don't go there. I don't take people there. I don't take God there. That is a part of my life that is closed up. I'm not going back. And in that very moment, the person said, just ask God, Father, where he was. Oh my, the Lord showed me pictures of why I could press through because in the midst of those things, he was there. I go into this thing that looked like a concentration camp in this vision that I have, and God was on the inside waiting for me to deal with this. 
He didn't just leave me. He never left me, nor is he, did he forsake me. But he was waiting there for me all the time. And when I was ready, I could go there and I could say, I forgive, I release, and, and, and I just let it all go. It wasn't something that held me back all the time, but there was always a small string attached that, man, I'm moving, but when I keep on moving, there's something that sometimes pulls me back. And the moment I did that, it caused the release in my life that I was free, free at last, and I thank God. And sometimes those hurts, you can give God a hand. You see, your past failure sometimes can keep you back. Past sin and past things that was done to you will keep you back from advancing, from pressing in. You see, I tried to justify some of the stuff, and I said, God, I'm saved, and Lord, I'm... But there was some stuff that I needed to release so that I can move on, that I can move on. Secondly, sometimes... Why is it that, you know, we have to forget what lies? Sometimes we wallow in our successes. Sometimes you're stuck in a position because I was so successful there and you've become comfortable and the reason why you cannot move ahead because you're stuck in yesterday. How many times that did you say, I used to be, I used to do, I used to be so great, I used to be able to, to sort things out, I used to, used to be is make no honey. Makes no honey. Don't wallow in your past successes. Do you know sometimes why we get stuck in our past successes? Because we cannot, we struggle to change with what is coming. What God is doing in the moment. So now we're stuck in that very thing that we deem so successful. I was so great in that hour. You know, if it, I didn't do it, it could not be done. That is sometimes where we wallow. Even in ministry. Hey. But let neither your past successes or your failures become the prison of your future. Don't let your past failures, sins, and hurts and your successes become the prison of your tomorrow. Forget what's behind you. You cannot change it. Nothing that you can do right now can change that moment. Nothing can change it. It is behind you. It's behind you. I was in the military for years. And in our training, there's something that we did that we call a fuss bait. In, if I would say this in English, it's a hold on. You know, they push you beyond your limits. And when you've reached your limits, then they push you even more. And then you find men crying, men fighting with each other because they're in a zone within their lives where they've never been before. That my body is tired, everything is tired inside of me. My tired is tired. But they still expect you to form, perform tasks. And when you're done with your tasks, they even expect you, like in the middle of your task, let me put it this way, they give you things to do. That is not something that acquires your strength physically, it acquires your mental mind to be applied, but it's hard. But then all of a sudden, when you press through that moment, you forget what's behind you, and you see what you're able to do in that moment, because there's more inside of you than what you think. And that sometimes, when you come to the end of that fuss beat, and we all get together, and we're singing as young sailors, celebrating, we forget what happened. That 12 kilometer race of walking on the sand, running and being messed up and carrying stuff, and, you, and all of a sudden, when you cross the line together, there's such a celebration, you forget about it. I think if there's somebody in this place that can talk about these kind of things, these kind of moments, forgetting what's behind you, it's a woman that's in birth. Yay! I saw my kids being born. Men have this thing of what we're saying, we are pregnant. <laughs> is it your feet that is swelling? Are you praying in the middle of the night, Lord, don't let my nose swell? <laughs> Lord, I don't want to carry the baby in my behind. You know, it's like, 
we, we hear that. I mean, come on. I, I have two kids. I know how my wife prayed. <laughs> and you know, if you call it, <laughs> Lord, please, please, may the child hear and the child's nose and all of this. I don't want the nose of the great grandmother. I want that sharp nose. Come on, listen. <laughs> this is what I... <laughs> A mother prays, hey! <laughs> but you know what? That moment of birth came, and my wife was having birth pains, and I'm like, we are pregnant? Hey! All of a sudden, you discover we ain't pregnant. <laughs> She's got these contractions, and I don't know what to do. And then she birthed that child. She was in pain. Leave me alone. Don't touch me. You know all of these things. But then she births this beautiful child. And with this child is in her arms, the pain is forgotten. I don't know how that happens. I just experienced watching what happens. I just saw you in so much pain and there's nothing I could do. But then she comes and that baby is in her arms. She forgets what is behind her. And she raises this child to the best of her ability. And so I think a lady would understand this more than us gentlemen. I'm just being, because there's nothing that's seeing the joy of a mother keeping a baby in her hand, seeing how she's pressed through nine months, seven days, and a moment. One foot in the grave, one foot in life, and this baby is born. So what I want to say to you, this one guy says it like this. Um, Henry Godwin says the following. He says this, when you live in the past, your tormentor today is yourself, left over from yesterday. Let that sink in. When you live in the past, your tormentor today is yourself, left over from yesterday. Here's my question to you. I want you to take a moment. Ask the Holy Spirit right now. Lord, Show me what is hindering me. Whether it's a past hurt, past success. Take a moment, ask. I promise you, God speaks to us. I've seen it, I've experienced it. Whether you are a believer or not, <laughs> He speaks to you. I've seen it. The reason why I'm saved, because He spoke to me when I was unsaved. He grabbed my attention, and I got saved. What is the thing that is hindering you? What is stopping you? Ask God to show you. Take a minute. Just ask him. You don't have to shandai right now. Ask him. So the next thing. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. The next thing Paul talks about. He says, I strain forward to what lies ahead. Verses 13 says the following, and straining forward to what lies ahead. You see, when I hear that word straining, there's nothing comfortable about that. There's nothing comfortable about straining and pressing through some of these things. Paul understood the following, that he has not attained the prize yet. But he also knew there was greater days ahead. And each day meant another chance, another opportunity to discover more about God. To enjoy his freedom because whom the Son is set free is free indeed. Another opportunity to become more like Christ Jesus. It also meant reaching more of the people that is waiting to experience the reality of Christ in their own lives. He's saying that I've got to strive forward. What's behind me, I cannot change. But what's ahead of me is greater things. Every day to enjoy my freedom in Christ a bit more. Every day to discover more about God. Every day another opportunity to become more like Christ. Here's something that I want to just quickly say. You know what's one of the undertaught ministries within the church? Suffering. Suffering. We want to reign with him, but we don't want to suffer with him. So what we, sometimes we need to just pause there for a moment. Part of your journey in life as a Christian, you will endure some suffering. 
You will endure some hardships. You know what happens when you do become a believer. If here is the battle line and on this side is the enemy, the whole time I was here. With the enemy, doing life with the enemy, and all of a sudden I now say, look here, till here and not further, boom, I stand on the line and I become his enemy. That's what happens. All of a sudden, all hell broke loose. Broke loose. That is what happens. But I want to say to you in this moment and in this hour that we have a king that overcame the world. We have a king of glory living inside of us. Therefore, when I rise to the line with the enemy, <laughs> Christ within me, the hope of glory. Greater is he that's within me than he that's within this world. I am more than an overcomer. That's who you are. That's who you are in Christ. So you don't have to run from the enemy. I'm right here, standing my ground. Amen. We strain forward, we push through, and sometimes it will be a tough one. But I want to say to you, you can make it. With Christ in your vessel, you can make it. Here's the thing. C.S. Lewis says the following. Hardships often prepares ordinary people for an extraordinary destiny. You see, sometimes you look at ministers and people that stands and, and preaches. You think we didn't go through much. You were born like that. You had it all together, the silver spoon and all of that. Yo, manita for you. The reason why we can speak with clarity sometimes, it's because we had to suffer with him. We had to learn what it's like to be betrayed on the highest of levels. These things happen. The moment you come and you think that the attack is not against you, the enemy comes. The reason why a believer can stand is because I'm covered by the blood. I'm covered by the blood. You face challenges. Even in my house, when the doctor said six months only, wow, it's 20 years later. Long six months. Long six months. Even when I got challenged with, with my finances and my wealth and, and, and I had to preach messages of faith and saying that the Lord is able to provide for you, Jehovah Jireh. And as I'm preaching some of these messages, my cupboards is empty at home. I don't even know I'm going to go home from that specific place that I was preaching at. Because I didn't preach for money and I will never do that. Freely I've been given, free seed, and freely I will give. This is something that I want to say to you that as a believer, don't think that when Paul says strain towards, it means straining. It's going to stroll. He didn't say stroll towards. He said strive, which means there will be resistance. It will try to pull you and push you left and right and you are struggling to get there and sometimes it will be hard but if you press through, I tell you this much, that all things work for good for those who love the Lord and is called according to His purposes. <laughs> Nothing is ever wasted with God. When the enemy wanted to take you out, it wasn't a wasted opportunity. Yes, you might have made a mistake. Yes, you might have sinned. But I'm telling you, there's a preparation that happens deep in your soul. That if some of us who dare to open our mouths to tell you what we really endure sometimes, I think you'll, <laughs> you'll be amazed. But you see, God is God. He's sovereign. He's sovereign. All of the stuff that you go through is preparation. I want you to do something quickly. The Holy Spirit is the one that guides us into all truth. I read that in the Word. I believe it. That settles the matter for me. What is some of the things, what is one thing that you can change that will help you in the future, 
to strain towards? What is that one thing that, that pulls you away? What is that thing? Ask the Holy Spirit quickly. Ask. Ask. The next point. Set your eyes. Set your sights on the goal. The reason why Paul was able to overcome the suffering and have joy that was in because his eyes were set on the prize. You see, the prize was not attaining the best car, the best house, the best everything. This guy wrote this letter from a Roman prison. A Roman prison. Dibra was in silver bangles for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Terence spoke so nicely last week and he said it was for the sake of the gospel that he was in those silver bangles. I don't know if it was rusted, but while he was. But he was in there for the sake of the gospel. But why could he endure the chains, endure the suffering, endure the flogging? Because he, his eyes were set on the prize. The prize is not what I can attain in this world because those things are temporary. And I'm not saying don't go for nice stuff. But what I'm saying to you, there's a bigger prize that's at stake, that's eternal life, being with Christ, absent from the body, present with the Lord. What is this prize? Paul pressed on through this. He pressed on in his journey because he knows that he can experience the reality of God here on earth until you meet his Father in heaven. In the same way, let us focus our eyes on Jesus. He is the ultimate prize. You know, the song that I love so much is that I can only imagine what it would be like talking about when I get to heaven when you're in his presence. You know, some of us, we have this thing, I'm just gonna sit there with the Lord. Lord, I wanna know why this happened, why that happened, why this happened, why did you do this like that? Couldn't you have found a better way with me and stuff like that? And, and we've got all of these things. Why is the scripture in there? If you give a prophet a glass of water, he's got the prophet's reward. Tell me about that. Because that guy didn't go through what I went through. Just in a, you know, I've, I've got these things. But ultimately, I don't think we'll be able to talk. I'll be gazing at the beauty of this majestic Christ Jesus, the word that became flesh and dwelt among us, and I can now dwell with him. I can stand in his presence and declare with the angels, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. I don't think I would have words. Sometimes I must probably just fall down on my face to worship him, attaining the very presence. Of God, Christ, the one that we spoke about, the one that we lived for on earth, that the ultimate, if, we, if Jesus comes back before we have to pass on, it's okay. If I have to pass on and then be reunited with Christ, it's okay. At least a believer in his heart and in her heart knows that for me, if I strive towards the price, the ultimate price, whom is Christ Jesus and his very presence, I'm in a good space. Hebrews 12, verses 1 to 2 says the following. Therefore, since you are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness, let us also lay aside every weight of sin which clings closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Regardless of what you are facing in this time and in this hour, we can overflow with the joy of knowing that it's all temporary. I'm not standing here this morning and say it's not hard. It's hard. It's tough. Life will teach you whether you want to be taught or not. Life will humble you whether you want to be humbled or not. I've been humbled. I've been taught. Life beat me up sometime. 
And it's not because I'm not in Christ. It is just by the fact that in this world that is fallen, I will have trouble. But if I endure, if I press on towards the mark of the high calling onto the prize, then I will experience the joy of the Lord. The joy of following Christ is knowing that if I should die on earth, that I'm going to be in His presence. The ultimate prize is awaiting for each one of us if you are believers Here's something. Sometimes when life gets hard, I've got a friend of mine. Uh, she's one of our pastors in the Val. She was a 400 meter runner. And so I asked her, Mark, hey, how do you run a 400 meter? Because you know it's like that middle kind of distance race that, that you have to endure and press through. And she says she runs the 300, right? And then she gets to the final part. And this is what she prays as she's running. And she was fast. But she says in that last hundred, she says, Lord Jesus, if you'd lift my feet up, I will put them down. And she says, that's what she does that last hundred. Lord, lift my feet up, I will put them down. She says, Lord, lift my foot up and I will put them down. Lord, lift my foot up because the eyes is set on the prize. I have pressed to 300. This is the last hundred meters. Lord, if you lift my feet up, I will put them down. You lift my foot up, I will put them down. Sometimes that will be your journey as a believer. Sometimes it will be your journey if you're not a believer. But it's different if you're not a believer because you do not have hope in a Christ that is ultimately there. You will have trouble in this world. Christ said that. Last one. I want to ask you this question. Who needs to experience the joy that you have in your heart knowing Christ is for me, Christ is within me? Mario Marullo, he's a great evangelist. He said, don't waste time with the distractions. Keep your eyes on your mission from God and keep going. My question to you, there's people around you, there's family members around you that doesn't know the joy of the Lord. Who are they? Ask God to show you one person in your family that doesn't know Jesus. In your friend circle that doesn't know Jesus. That doesn't know the joy that you have. Even though all hell breaks loose, I've got peace in my soul that transcends all understanding because Jesus is my joy. And the joy of the Lord becomes my strength. There's people that you need to share with. Jesus said this when he knew for the joy that was set before him. You know, for me sometimes, I don't think, I think there's, there's two things that happens there. It was not the joy only of being reunited with his Father in heaven, but it's the joy of completing the mission and also the joy because of the mission is completed that those that don't know him now has an opportunity to be reunited with God. That is a great joy that we can be part of people's lives and those that don't know Christ, we can tell them about this great joy that we have within us even when it's hard even when it's hard I'm not saying to you smile all the time even when it's hard be authentic be real it's okay but there's something that has to come through that in the midst of that I trust in my Savior my Lord my God and all things will work for good for those who loves me and if I should not be here one day if I should pass on. It will be a celebration because I have the joy of the Lord of being within His presence. This morning I want to ask you that question. Who needs to experience this joy? Jesus said, go into the world and make disciples of all nations. If you are in this room this morning and you know that you might have come into the service for whatever reason. But I know if God wants to get a message to you, He will set you up. 
He might have set you up this morning in a baby dedication. He might have set you up in some other way that you just ended up here. But God knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. God this morning wants to fill you with the joy of knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. See, when you're in this world and you don't know Christ, it is hard to be filled with the glorious joy of Christ Jesus being your Lord and Savior, that in the midst of all my battles, I'm never alone. That there's a love and a joy that comes from heaven that brings me to a place when I'm dealing with my emotions and my stuff and I deal with my stuff. I tell the Lord how I feel. I tell Him because He made me with the will, with my emotions, with my flesh and my spirit. So when I pour out my emotions and I speak, why are you so downcast, my soul? And I pour it out before Him. And when I'm done and I say, but I put my hope in God. And how will you trust him? But if you don't know Christ, who are you going to? When your emotions and your world start tumbling down, I'm not saying come to Jesus and all of that will be messed up. I'm saying Christ died on the cross so that you can have abundant life with him. In this world, you will endure trouble. But for the joy set before you, can you invite him in? Because if there's no joy that you're pushing towards, it's eternal damnation, fires of hell. Can you play with your eternal life? If you've never made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior and you want to experience him for who he truly is, and you want to step into a relationship that will lead you to a mind and a heart and a soul and a place where you know that the joy of the Lord is there. It's within me. And if I should go, I'm going to be in His presence and experience His joy in new ways. If you are in this place, and you want to experience Jesus Christ. You've never made Him your Lord and Savior. And you want to come to Him, commit your life to Him, or recommit your life even to Him that you know that I've dwelt away. If that is you, would you raise your hand? I'm going to give you a couple of moments. I don't want you to be shy. Don't worry. This is your joy, <laughs> not your neighbor's joy, not your mama's joy. If that is you, I want you to be bold and say, that's me. I want to commit my life or recommit my life to Jesus this morning. I want to experience the fullness of His joy within my life. That's great. I'm going to give you just a couple of seconds. No hands doesn't intimidate me. The Holy Spirit is at work, not me. Lastly, I want us to stand. You ask God for three things. One, show me what's hindering me from going forward. The second one that you ask God was what can you change? What is one thing that you can do different in this week to come that will help you? And lastly, you ask God for a person that you can share this joy with that you have within your heart. I want you to bring that before God and I want to pray for you. Father, I thank you that you are God. And you are God alone. There's no one else like you. I thank you, Lord God, that in the race of life, we can have your joy in our hearts. And right now, 
whatever's hindering my brother and my sister from going forward, I pray that you would release them right now. When they need to forgive, let them forgive, my Lord. Restore unto them the joy of your salvation. Father, I also ask to give my brothers and sisters the strength, give me the strength to change the things that you have shown me that needs to change so that I can strain towards the joy of knowing you. And Father, lastly, you see that this multitude of names that is coming up to your altar right now that is in our minds of people that doesn't know you, that has never experienced your joy as yet. Father, this morning, give us boldness to love them and to show them the true joy that comes from having a relationship with you. I pray, O oh Father God, that those people that is in darkness will step into your marvelous light in the name of Jesus. In fact, I call them out of the darkness into your light. Because you said I can call the things that is not. Like it is already, my God. We don't do this arrogantly. But we ask you for your mercy and your grace. We give you glory and honor today. Flood our hearts with your joy. Those that have lost joy along the journey of life that might be in that position of saying, Lord, you lift them up, I'll put them down. Fill them. A fresh joy I speak into their lives. A joy unspeakable. Fill them. Fill us all, Lord. Fill us all. More of you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> More. Yes, Lord. Give the Holy Spirit a time just to respond to those very things that you just prayed. Don't rush. He's here. His presence is moving. Receive it right now. Joy unspeakable. Flood our hearts, our minds, our souls. We thank you, Jesus. Now just thank you. Take a moment, thank you. Thank you. This is not about goosebumps and tears and chills and thrills. And some of you might have experienced some of that. Others might not have felt a whole lot of things. But know this. You just receive it. Go and walk in this new joy. This refreshing joy. Today it changes. Today it shifts. Because we've got the joy of the Lord that is our strength. We thank you, Father. We thank you for who you are. We give you all the glory and the honor. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. And the church of God says, one last thing that I cannot just leave aside. Something that I always see, God, I'll do. My God is able to heal. I cannot heal. If there's sickness in your body this morning, or even you know of somebody that is sick, would you stand in the gap for them? If there's pain... If there's somebody at home that's sick, I want you to stand in the gap. The Holy Spirit is going to touch. He's going to heal. Now I'm very clear. Some, God doesn't heal. He's sovereign. For the joy said before you press on. But there's some that God just heals. That's what He does. So I want you to have faith in saying, God, I know you can. And I'm going to pray for you quickly. If that is you, just lay your hands on the body part. That's fine. I've laid multiple hands on multiple times on my body for the same thing. And eventually sometimes, whoo, the pain disappears. After a long time, let's persevere. Father, I thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you. I 
pray that you touch every broken body. In the name of Jesus, heal every pain, restore every muscle, grab hold of every mind, take those thought captives, captive, man. heal hearts, emotional hurts, restore it right now. Right now. Anxiety go, depression go. Heart disease go. That person that is trusting for healing for somebody at home, God is moving. Keep trusting. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for touching and healing. We give you all the glory and the honor. Speak to muscle pains, gone. That lower back, healed. <laughs> we thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. There's a mother that's worried about her son. Stop worrying. God is at work. Stop worrying. You've been praying some prayers. He's been answering, just not in your time, like you think it should happen, but he's working. Even when you can't see it, he's working. Stop worrying, because he's got that young man in the palm of his hands. God bless you guys. Have a great Sunday further. Time is fast spent. Can you just um, lift your hands as I just dismiss us? I do feel that um, there are some people that might need more prayer. So even after you've gone, some of the leaders will still be here. You can just come to the front, to the either the right or the left, or come to my right, um, and then we will continue to pray for you. But I'm going to close the service right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much that uh, we find our joy in you. And Father, as we go right now, Lord, we choose to forget the things which are behind us, oh God. We choose, Lord, to stretch forward to the things that are ahead. But what we do in the present, Lord, we look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you go. Please join us for a cup of coffee if you're visiting for the first time. Come to the front if you need prayer. Those that were water baptized, your certificates is at the info table. And those that had babies dedicated, there are certificates for you there as well. Next week, Pastor Wayne will share the, the, the next part in our series. Amen. Thanks, Dahlia. Thank mm -hmm. you.